another up close video. Today's one is for Tonic Showcase number 43, which is called the Eternal Love Lantern. If you hear any funny noises in the background, it's Pumpkin. <laughs> She's currently on the windowsill chewing on a toy. Um, I just thought I'd say that just in case she makes any funny noises. Um, so, this month's die set or showcase creates one of these lanterns, which is a really tall kind of box. Um, obviously, a lantern means you can cut the pieces in and then put something to illuminate it but you don't always want um, like a gift box or something to have an illumination to it because you want to be able to make the most of the space to put a gift in it so I've just done mine with some of the gorgeous panels on here you've got a bride and a groom on it um, and I've done it so that it's a solid gift box but I've made it out of iridescent mirror card to kind of if the light hits it kind of gives that illuminationy lanterny kind of uh, feel to it as well there's also different variations on this that you can create and you'll see that on the packaging when you get yours you can put one or two drawers on the bottom you don't have to put any drawers on the bottom you can have a beveled bottom or just the flat bottom and you can also do this beveled lid which kind of is reminding me of the TARDIS especially with that little piece on the top there um, but you can do the beveled version or you can just have the flat version which is just using this base piece that's part of the actual lid as well and the way that this actually um, opens and closes it's quite clever the locking sort of uh, catch piece is actually inside rather than being on the outside and then you can put anything through it that you like they've designed this piece here so you can actually put like um, a metal book ring through it if you want to properly hang it up to be a lantern um, and you could you could do the same thing on um, this kind of closure as well you can use a little rolled up um, piece of paper to make a little sort of stick to go through it or you can use twine and ribbon as well and you've also got like a little tag here that you can actually hang off of that too and then you also have the drawer part at the bottom as well which you can also do this kind of opening on too or you can do the little um, drawer pull as well and you can do as many of those as you want you can have them um, whichever facing whichever way you want as well because you have a back piece to this sort of drawer portion so you could have them all at the front you could do um, two or three of them and have them uh, one on each side as well like two sort of going one here and then one would be down here opening sideways whichever way you want to do it or you can have them all going um, down the front of it and maybe if you've used this kind of uh, piece here that has the hole in there you could maybe lock all of the drawers together by threading a ribbon or a twine up all of the holes um, in all of the drawers as well so you could do sort of different design features on it too but this is what the actual die set creates um, and I'll run through which pieces make all of these there are full detailed instructions in the packaging and that's what I followed to make mine so they do work and you can actually um, create your lantern from them and they've given you all of the correct details as the correct number of which pieces to cut and um, so it makes it really really easy for you to be able to put it together so let's go with the drawer first so this is a really simple kind of element that you might have seen in like um, different tonic die sets where they have this sort of extra foldy over piece to make it a really strong little drawer um, and you can also use this for different projects as well maybe you just wanted a small little chest of drawers you could actually stack these up together and put two or three of them on top of each other not sure where I'm gonna cut that because I just got interrupted by the postman but basically this sort of element creates the inside of the drawer and you could put together your own little chest of drawers if you wanted to so you would cut two of these twist them round stick them together on this square portion then you use these glue tabs to stick the sides up and then you actually adhere this over the top here to create a double thick side to make it really strong so you actually have a double thick base and double thick, thick sides as well so um, a really strong draw piece and then you also have this portion that creates the surround for the drawer so you cut two of these um, and you stick them together at the glue tab so it'll go square piece rectangle square rectangle and then you'll have a glue tab on the other side which will join it back round again and then to go on the back of that to stop the drawer from sliding all the way out you will have um, this back piece which is just scoring all of those glue tabs and inserting it into the back of it and then your drawer will go in the front of it so you can see how this could be useful for different projects as well or even just for creating a fun um, little matchbox kind of style gift as well you don't even have to put the back piece on it could slide out front and back as well so lovely little um, extra pieces in this set that obviously are part of the lantern but you could use them for other projects too then let's go with um, the main sides of the lantern so this is 
the main side piece and it goes up this way because this little slit is where the sort of uh, locking mechanism goes into and on the other three sides of the box you have panels that you can cover this up so they've had to put the slit in the die so when you cut all four of the sides you're going to have the slit in all four of them but you've got decorative pieces that you can stick across there to cover up that little slit in the three sides that you don't need it. Um, and then this uh, glue tab at the bottom will secure it, anything you're putting on the bottom of the lantern. And then this piece at the top, you're actually going to fold three of them round and stick them down to the inside. And then the, f the fourth one, which will be opposite wherever you're deciding to put your lock, is the hinge to make the lid open. And I had a little bit of trouble with mine because I cut the body of mine out of the iridescent mirror card. Um, so I did actually use some staples to help the hinge really um, you know stick on and work well so I'll show you that uh, when I show you the project in more detail as well so you can actually use staples to really secure that onto there and I think if you're doing the flat topped version it's exactly the same way of um, sort of adhering the lid on so you can definitely do the staple thing with the flat top version as well so those are the side panels then we have got um, let's go with this plinth piece at the bottom so for that plinth you actually need two of these which have all of the pieces scored on here for you and it's really easy to follow with all of the glue tabs. This skinnier glue tab here is what you then adhere um, a square onto to close in the top portion and the wider glue tabs at the bottom. The reason why they're wider is because you will also use this same square to go on them but they're wider so that they come right in so that the square will still fit over the top without any gaps showing. So that's how you create that sort of bottom plinth piece which again is quite a useful thing to have if you were just uh, maybe rearranging your um, shelves in your lounge and you've got like decorative ornaments and stuff but you feel like something needs to be elevated a little bit higher or something or you really want to focus the attention onto some small little ornament um, you could make your own little plinths and put them underneath your little ornaments on your shelf as well so I think this is like um, a nice little extra sort of die set again that can be used for other things then on top of this plint you also have this extra little step um, you also have this as part of the top as well and this could just be the flat top by itself too and for that you need two of those squares and actually this square has a gorgeous debossing line in it as well so it's perfect for your card making too uh, but you need two of those and two of these for each little sort of platform that you're creating and you're basically just uh, folding this all the way around you stick them together with the glue tabs you fold them all the way around you fold the glue tabs in then you stick one square on the top one square on the bottom and it gives you this kind of platform piece which again can be really useful for other different projects if you like that um, style of like a canvas stuck on the front of your card I did a video uh, a little while back showing how to use fabric on your card and I showed some Jamie Rogers um, canvas dye but these two dies would work perfectly for that same thing as well you could create your own little square canvas that would fit perfectly on the front of your card and you'd have this gorgeous debossed line around the edge of it too so that would be another lovely way of creating a card with this too I think I might have shown that in another video as well I can't 100% remember but I think I might have done it too um, then you also got these pieces here which you would need four of them and they create this sort of tapered section at the top of the lantern here so again that might be a cool little plinth piece that you can create to put a small ornament on the top of to make it really show off on your um, shelving unit so you've got those that you would cut four of them to put them around there and then the piece that goes on the top of that is this piece here which creates this little extra small little platform that works really nicely there but again also that could be a small little canvas on a card you could put four of them into a square you could put three of them um, vertically or horizontally down or across a card depending on the layout you're working on and put a little focal element or a stamped image or anything you want to in the center of that and that could be little canvases for a card again as well then you also have these different elements here which one of them is designed to go on the front of the drawer and one of them is designed to go on the top of the box on top of that little small little plinth that I just showed you and the reason why they have a square inside them is so that this die will fit inside it so this actually all folds up together to create this little portion here this piece that you can actually put um, a metal ring through um, or any kind of like looped mechanism that you want 
maybe it's a ribbon, maybe it's a string, maybe it is something metal, or even some wire, you could put wire through and then twist it together. Um, so this little die is what creates that, and it's really strong and sturdy as well. The way these sort of fold in together, it's nicely reinforced, which is good. And when, once you've built this little cube piece up, it slots through this little hole and then you can stick it on the back so that when you're putting this as like a draw pull on the front it's really going to actually pull the drawer open because it's not just stuck on and you can easily pull it off it's going to be behind your front decorative panel so it's going to really stay on nicely and the same with the top of the box as well so you've got that piece and then similarly to that piece you also have this piece that creates the um sort of closure mechanism piece so this is actually like the tab that goes inside the box and then these again are, are reinforced so this folds over and this folds over and then these two have got a little score line that fold and stick into this center piece and that is what pokes through the slit in the front of the box for you to tie your twine or put some kind of um, other closure onto as well then um you have the pieces to decorate the top around here but also the drawer as well um, this piece is the one that goes over the slit on the top of the box and then you also have the corresponding rectangle to cut for the other three sides to cover where the slit is as well so you've got those pieces um, this piece here is actually um, an interior piece this you don't even see this but it's actually inside this base to make it really nice and sturdy and strong you can see that sort of uh, bevel on the corner of it there and that actually goes along with this bevel here and that is like um, a support structure and they go inside you put four of them together folding them in um, right angles and sticking them back to back and they're actually inside there to make that really strong so again if you are using that little plinth piece as something else to go on your shelf um, you've got these gorgeous um, support pieces inside there too then you also have other pieces for decorating around the top so uh, this one also has the slit cut out of it so that can go over the main portion with the slit and then you also have the matching rectangle with design inside as well and if you want that debossed edge the previous little rectangle that I showed you has that debossed edge as well so you can definitely completely match that together then you do also have um, another rectangular design as well with another rectangle and then this kind of piece has actually got slits in it so I presume you could um I guess actually that's quite a cool idea I'm thinking this would go on the three other sides and you could thread your ribbon through um so that it is going like in front of or behind this piece and then they would both come round and meet at the front and then tie through the little opening I think that's maybe what that is for so you see here where the twine's there if you'd use these pieces on the side you could have threaded the twine underneath that middle section and then it popped around the corner here rather than just attaching it it could have been actually attached to the box so that you wouldn't lose this when you open the box as well so I think maybe that's why that piece is like that then you also have this gorgeous decorative piece for the top of the box on that slanty angle so you can decorate that and it has this gorgeous debossed texture in there with like swirls and a heart in the centre and you can see that on the finished sample just there I've done it into iridescent mirror card so it kind of reflects uh, a few different colours but really really pretty design then you also have a different square top decorative piece as well so if you didn't want to put um, the little cube that actually has like a ring to go through it you could just do a flat top to it as well or if you are doing the flat topped box maybe you want four of these to create a design on it or for the flat topped box you can cut yourself um, a square to go on there as well and this one has actually got the deboss line in it too but it's smaller than the square that you use to create the plinthy kind of pieces but another gorgeous square to have in your stash then uh, let's go with this piece this is the other draw pull piece so this is just like a typical draw pull that you, again you might have seen in other tonic die sets where they've had like um, draw elements to it these just fold down behind and then you've got a decorative piece to put on the top as well which has got a debossed heart in it too and that looks really lovely on here you've got that gorgeous little debossed heart which shows really nicely an iridescent mirror card or um, satin mirror card as well. And you can also see this gorgeous debossed detail in the panels as well. Um, and then that is one of those other ones cut out as well, just to show you. Then um, around the top portion here, 
if you have the flat lid, I'm, I think I'm remembering right from the picture that I saw on the packaging, if you have the flat lid to it, you don't have quite so much of this showing, I think. Um, so you've actually got these skinnier kind of panels to decorate there as well. So one solid one and one that has hearts that deboss and emboss in there as well. But again, these could be cool little elements to build up a twiggy kind of wreath um, that you then put the flowers on top of. You could cut this multiple times out of different brown colours, lay them, you know, sort of haphazardly in a wreath kind of shape and then use the gorgeous flowers that you're getting in this kit as well to turn it into a wreath. So you're getting a little set of three... Um, six pointed pointy kind of daisy flowers really really pretty and really easy to shape you can just poke them in the middle with a ball tool and then all the petals will kind of pop upwards then you do also have a different closure mechanism so this is actually a magnetic closure mechanism so you would put this portion in one area and then this is actually a little disc designed to hide your magnet so you can actually stick that behind this little tab to hide the magnet that you stuck on the tab or you could cut a second one and stick that on and then you can also use the disc to hide the other magnet that's sort of inside the box as well then we also have the rectangle for the side panel of the box and this is actually in two parts. So you have this gorgeous edge piece that has got some gorgeous debossing detail in there. Or you can just cut this out of a plain cardstock if you don't want the detail. But it has that beautiful deboss pattern just around the edges. Then you also have this piece which you can place inside there. You can just have a solid element there if you want to. Or you've also got three designs that will fit inside. This has kind of got a little bit of that mosaic -y pattern that's in that little side panel. Some gorgeous swirly pieces in here. And a really gorgeous overall kind of design. And then you have the three elements that will fit inside. So if you want more of a, a plain kind of look you can put this piece inside it which again has debossy detail around the edges and then that kind of mosaic -y pattern in the middle which kind of gives like a screen sort of look to it and you can place that directly inside or if you really want to go for um, the uh, love kind of theme you've actually got these two people so you've got a bride and a groom um, and they're actually facing each other as well which is nice so when you're putting your panels on your box if you're putting them next to each other uh, make sure you're checking which way round you're putting them so that they face each other and they're not got their backs to each other um, I've actually done mine so I've got two of the plain patterns on the front and back and then I've got the woman on one side and the man on the other side so they're kind of both facing forwards but you can sort of lay them out however you want to and my tutorial video is actually showing you how to put these two dies together and create your own sort of kind of template piece I guess um, that you can use to give an embossing folder kind of look on your card. I know I've done a couple of techniques with similar kind of um, themes to them but I don't think I've ever shown this um, in a tutorial video so that'll be tomorrow's video with a tutorial but um, they're lovely sort of Sim simplified kind of silhouette images of a, a man and a woman and they work really nicely for maybe like um, a wedding card invitation if you're using them um, in the way that I'll show you in tomorrow's tutorial video and also show you the cards later on in the video as well but those are the other two decorative panels then we've still got more to show we've got a gorgeous little banner which again has that um, debossing line all the way around the edge of it really really pretty debossed line and we also have this little banner here which you can put um, in the centre of that not necessarily cutting them together because that's got an outside cutting edge but you can layer it up perfectly in the centre and that one says celebrate with us which is a really nice sentiment for a wedding card like a invitation kind of card you're sort of inviting someone to celebrate with you um, so that works really nicely as a greeting on a card as well then you also have some different gift tag versions that you can hang off of um, the twine or anything that you decide to use. Um, to decorate on there so you've got um, a lovely heart which has the hole in to hang it up and it's also got the debossed um, line around the edge of it you have got this gorgeous shape which sort of um, 
mimics the shape on the side of the lantern with the gorgeous decorative panels and to go inside this one you actually have um, a similar kind of idea with the man and the woman there as well and this was kind of what inspired my tutorial video because I was like oh these are embossed so maybe you can get that embossed kind of look with the die panels and it does work so and again they can face each other or you can put them back to back if you want I actually put one on each side of my little gift tag so if you um, twiddle it around you've got the woman on one side you can see that and then the man on the other side so they work really nicely with that deboss kind of design and then finally we have a few more little gift tags so you've got just basic little circle ones that are you know really handy just to have and um, these could be like little price labels if you like to sell uh, the boxes and cards that you create this could be like a little price label you can tie it on with a piece of string as well and then you've also got mr and ampersand and misses in these tiny little ovals which work really nicely to sort of decorate portions of the box too. So I'm going to put all of these dies away and then I'll come back and show you the samples that I have created. So you've already seen this lantern a lot in the video uh, but I thought I'd just show you in a little bit more detail and also give you a top tip. Because I cut the main panels out of the um, Tidal Wave iridescent mirror card, you know when you put um, sides together and they're all separate sides, every single side is going to show the side of your piece of card and with the iridescent mirror card the inside of the card is white. So. I had all of these ugly white lines showing on all of the corners but you can see there they've gone and that's because I took one of my Nuva alcohol pens, this is the Tuscan Teal which is 369 um, if you want to know the exact colour that works with the Tidal Wave iridescent Miri cardstock. Um, I just ran it down that open edge of the card and it kind of disguises it so it's not so obvious as a big white line down the side. I haven't done it on the edge of the panels because um, they were a slightly different cardstock but you definitely could have done it on the, the edge of the panels as well and then you wouldn't be able to see that white but I knew you'd be able to see white anyway because I stuck these on with 3D foam so um, I put like skinny little pieces of 3D foam around the edges so I knew you'd be able to see white down the side anyway. But that's that is the lantern that I created. I've got a little gift tag with the man and the woman on both sides. I've got the woman on one side, the man on the other side. I've got the little celebrate with us on the little banner stuck onto the plinth at the bottom. I've got the little drawer down there. And then the way this opens is, if I undo my bow, I'll show you how this clever um, it's kind of clever because it's sort of like hidden. Um, I think it's a, a, a different kind of way than what we've seen on some other um, tonic boxes. You can see how that just pokes through there um, and you can put whatever you want through that. You can put the little like bit of um, a bamboo skewer or a rolled up piece of paper or something through that little piece but you can also push it backwards and then that is how it's attached. It's attached on the inside of this box and then it pokes on the inside there. Um, you can also see here, the front one I stuck down because otherwise it will interfere with this, but the other two I did actually just fold them over and left them like that. Um, so you can stick them down or you can fold them. I just felt like it was quite tricky to get this to stay stuck nicely because it's quite thick iridescent mirror card. Um, it was trickier to fold that tiny little tab round. If you just use regular cardstock it should be much easier to fold that round and stick it down. And then the back hinge piece, this is where I have used some staples. So I actually... When you make this piece, it tells you to stick all of the um, squares together and everything as you're building it. But to be able to staple this lid onto here, I cut one extra square and then I actually placed that square on top of the box first and stapled that square on and then I stuck this whole piece on top of the other square. So this bottom portion of the plinth has actually got two squares um, of cardstock there. But I've actually used the staples to hold that on so it's a really strong um, little hinge mechanism there. I feel like because that's such a small little area and because I was using iridescent mirror card um, it works really well just to add those staples and you can't particularly see them. I mean when it's from the side you don't notice them at all um, but it just adds a little bit of extra security so whatever lid you're doing cut an extra square staple that on first and then stick your top to that square and I think that works really nicely. And then to close this up, you just push that back inside, it will slot through the little slit that's there, 
and then you can take the end of your twine I've just tied the tag to the other end of my twine um, and this is just one of the baker's twines that Tonic does I don't have the uh, names on any of them anymore because obviously I, I took the packaging off but I think this is probably um, like the ocean teal kind of colour this one if I can it's fraying so we can just poke that back through the hole Obviously it went through really easy the first time I did this and then because I'm doing it on camera it's really difficult but you can um, use tweezers and things if you would rather to help you pull that through um, and then you just lay that down and then I tied um, a knot first and then just tied my bow on top of the knot and then that just holds it nice and securely into place and because I've tied the tag onto the end of that it actually makes um, it sort of more of a design feature so you can leave the tails quite long so it makes it really easy for somebody uh, like the recipient to open it and be able to close it again you haven't got to cut the tails really short to make it look really nice um, so that is the actual lantern that I created and then obviously I had to do some cards so I did this sort of like abstracty kind of card and the sentiment is one of the um, simply sentiments uh, from this die set as well um, and I just used some of those squares and rectangles that have the square that falls out to be able to put that um, piece that holds the ring um, inside it. I just cut them from different colours of green, randomly placed them all over the background, even used the fall away squares in some areas as well, and then used a few of the gorgeous flowers that you get in the set too. So you've got all of the different sizes that layer up. This is the large and the medium, and then that's the small size there. And then I've just used the hello in the centre. And then these are the two cards, which I will be showing um, how I have created these in the tutorial video tomorrow. So if you like the look of these, and you want to know how I have created that effect, then uh, check out the tutorial video tomorrow. So this one was just doing it into mirror card, and then this one was doing it into white card, ink blending with some blue ink and some glacier paste which color is it I think it's called golden era yeah golden era area golden era glacier paste and um, on a little sort of mini ink blending tool and then blending that over the top and then I did also bring the element that I created to be able to make these back over the top and did a little bit more stenciling through it so you're kind of the method that I'm going to show you tomorrow is kind of like creating your own embossing folder with coordinating stencil as well um it's a it's a uh, probably an age-old kind of uh, technique of a, a way of doing stuff but I don't think I've really seen anybody do it with a die like this you, you're usually doing it where you die cut a bunch of other die cuts you stick them all down and then you run it through so anyway you'll you'll see tomorrow how I created these effects if you like the look of them then you can check out the tutorial tomorrow so really simple couple of uh, sort of like wedding invitation cards I'm noticing now that's not quite square on that card blank but um yeah a couple of like invitation -y sort of cards because they say celebrate with us I feel like that's a invitation kind of style card so um yeah i hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget if you want to get hold of this die set there will be affiliate links in the description box below the video as well and i really appreciate you using those links too it really does make a big difference and it's no extra cost to you to be able to use them so thank you so much for watching and i will see you again um tomorrow with the tutorial of how to do this card so thank you for watching bye mm -hmm.